Well, we're back in episode two of Podcast Tips with Rob Greenlee, and I'm really excited to be here with you. Me too. I was yeah. I was very flattered that you asked me. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's <laughs> great. What'd you say? Yeah, it's great to be here. And yeah, yeah I had a little feedback coming in. So there's always these little technical things that happen sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> No, so, and it's good to be transparent. <laughs> right. And that's kind of, you know, it's a little bit what, what I want to talk about in the show today. But but really, this episode, I wanted to focus on kind of the topic of the merging of audio and video podcasting mm -hmm. kind of together. Now, th this is for me, and I talked about this in episode one, this is a little bit of a return to something that existed with podcasting many, many years ago. Uh, so we're, we're kind of going back in time while progressing forward in time. And so with the expanding significance of a video, I think it's important for us to really um, talk about it and talk about practical ideas. Um, and you're a terrific person for me to talk to. You're, you're relatively new somewhat to podcasting, but also mm -hmm. you're a veteran of video, working at platforms uh, uh, like a CNN and those kind of things. And also, you know, just to speak to those that are watching this, um, we can also learn from you too. Uh, there, mm -hmm. There's a lot of uh, people trying new things and that's really one of the, the core um, kind of benchmarks of podcasting is the collaborational part um, of it. Um, podcasters helping other podcasters and, and sharing ideas and those kind of things. And that's kind of what this is also a representative. And I've tried to make this show kind of uh, reflect the values that have got us here. So, and that's, that's sharing ideas and bringing on great guests to, to talk about what they're doing with podcasting and how that might, uh, be, be something that they can do in their own productions. Mm -hmm. And, and so that's kind of a big, big thing, but, but the big message is we also want to learn from you and, you know, you that are watching this mm -hmm. and because frequently, um, you're going to bring insights that we're going to miss because you're using maybe different tools or you're in a different genre. So, so please share with us uh, your ideas in the comments and ask us questions and let's work through this. Let, let's, let's make this a collaborational effort to make all of us be better podcasters. And, mm -hmm. and so this, this podcast itself, uh, like, like I said, it's really to bridge the gap between audio and video podcasts because podcasting over the last probably five or six years, has got this mentality that it's all just audio and, and it really has not been, uh, in, and to bring the creatives together, bring listeners together and talk about some of the new things in podcasting too, the podcasting 2.0 initiative and how live streaming fits into this. Um, uh, and, and I talked about that a little bit and, and RSS, which is the, the established way that podcasts are distributed today. And there is a video RSS podcast opportunity as well as an audio one. So mm -hmm. oftentimes people don't realize that. So people oftentimes think just YouTube. Um, so, but also I want, wanted to mention to stick to the end of the show today because I'm going to, I'm going to do a little StreamYard swag giveaway. So you're going to want to enter into the comments on this, the, um, hashtag podcasting well, I'm in the comments, it. right? And to potentially win a pillow and a puddles mallard duck, so you can actually get get that too. And you, you can actually see the pillow behind me if I scoot a little bit. It's uh, it it's actually embedded in the the uh, right there. <laughs> <laughs> so you can get one of those for yourself, and if you become a streamyard content creator then you too can put it in your background if you want so right on there with puddles nice <laughs> i may need a duck that's cute right that's awesome it's awesome so so i should probably say who i have on the, the line here um jamie um uh, magleta and magleta, mm -hmm. magleta. I, now I if people are watching from another country they may say maglietta <laughs> that's right that's right but magleta and, yeah and I stand corrected. And uh, if you have a background in, in TV news, uh, mm -hmm. she's, you know, produced many live programs across ENN, uh, CNN and mm -hmm. Fox news and things like that. So she's mm -hmm. got a little, she's got a little bit of an experience background with the big 
content creators out there, the big um, uh, media creators. That's not to say that um, everything that the big media creators we want to bring into podcasting, but I think that there's some lessons to be learned uh, from that and your experience with that. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk about a funny aspect of that, but let, let's let, let's get into that, especially during the pandemic era of mm. um, of when when everybody was doing shows from home. I don't, I'm sure that you remember that time frame, right? Uh, I could talk <laughs> about it because I was in the studios right. making sure shows stayed on right. the air. So yeah, right. That's that's when th that's when I thought ma mainstream media really became kind of podcasters at that point. So they mm -hmm. they were they're really put in that mindset that if I'm going to do my show, I can't do it from an expensive studio. I got to do it from <laughs> home. But anyway, I'm already doing that segment. So um, <laughs> let's, and uh, you, you're in the middle right now of launching a YouTube video podcast of sorts called On Camera Ready. Yes. And you're the producer and host. So mm -hmm. that's what we all do here at, here at StreamYard is we, we do our own, we push the buttons and pull mm -hmm. the sliders and, <laughs> and do the content, create the outlines, invite the guests. But in mainstream mm -hmm. media, they have a bunch of producers and they have a lot of things. And that's also another big trend in podcasting, too, that maybe we can cover as well. But you also wor worked on the CNN uh, Re Reliable Sources podcast mm -hmm. and um, also probably in, in studio, uh, I would think, to some degree on that to be able to work with that. So mm -hmm. welcome to the show, Jamie. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate the intro. I'm so glad to be here and again, flattered. And um, I'll chat with some of you in the uh, chat because I really like having a chat here. And I'm really glad to be here to, you know, share some of my knowledge and also gain from some of yours. I mean, I'm new to podcasting and I've been testing out video podcasting with On Cam Ready. And, you know, it, there's a lot to it and it's, it's not an easy um, lift, but it can be simplified. I've figured out that it can be as simplified as possible. You just have to have the right tools. Right. I think that's really, really important as you think about um, trying to bridge this gap between video and audio. Um, and there's techniques that I think that we, we can share and, um, and that can help people kind of work through those things. I know I've been struggling with them for the last two years trying to do it myself, um, getting studio lights. And actually, I mm -hmm. talked about on last week's episode to some degree how I've kind of built out my own studio. And you can see all my fancy colored lights and stuff in the background. So that's all new for me. I, I usually had just like a blank wall behind me. So <laughs> it was, it was basically just kind of really, really generic, but, but it's funny when I think back on that, I kind of see people do that and I'm like going, well, that that's a little nostalgic. That's like, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's clean. And then I also saw research talking about how, how uh, the most effective background is a background full of books. <laughs> oh really that's yeah good to know yeah. i well, mean during tells... covid that was the main background we had right i mean every show right. guest that turned up from home had had book background <laughs> right i mean it tells your audience that you're a reader and that you're mm -hmm. educating yourself and that books are important to you it's it's kind of a psychological thing it's kind of like uh, if you spend a lot of time in the library you might actually learn something so it's the same it's the same idea behind that but but i think it's it's definitely um you know, there's aspects of this, like even clothes and, and things that you mm -hmm. do, um, what kind of lights, what's the angle on the lights, what's the, yes. you know, I've been wrestling with all that kind of stuff for, for a mm -hmm. long time too, but, uh, let's, let's kind of dive into it a li little bit here. I know that you have a uh, slide deck that you shared with me, so I'm going to pull it up here and. Oh yeah. I can't even remember what we sent here. Let's see. Oh, yeah. some YouTube. You want to start off with some, just some news to get people acquainted with where we, where things are. Uh, sure. If you, I mean, yeah, if you want to do that, that's a I, good place to start. And then we can really de dive deep into, you know, the equipment and things that people may need and how to simplify and maybe talk about outfits too. You know, this yeah. is just a little bit about who I am. You know, I work at, um, I've worked at numerous networks yeah. on the creative side, and now I work in production management and as a freelancer. And really what's been great, you know, Rob, is the fact that I was a creative full time and now I'm I'm not. So now I get to be creative in my downtime, downtime yeah. as um, a content creator. So I I am a um, since I am a freelancer, I did start my own business on Cam Ready. I'm a content creator for brands and I also have a podcast and now a video podcast, which I'm really excited 
about. On Cam Ready is really there to try and help people who want to be on camera or want to really produce up their social media or their podcasts so that they can be on camera ready at all times. So I'm providing tips, you know, there on equipment to ways to dress up and how to do your makeup. Because if you were podcasting before, you didn't really have to think of all that. Right, right. Rob? Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> I mean, you just pulled up a microphone and started talking into it. And so, some people didn't even use microphones. They, they were talking into their mobile phones or they were talking on their laptop. So exactly. Um, so before so, it was all about the microphone and yes, the microphone still matters, but now it's okay. You, do you really need a ring light or should you go with soft lights? How many lights to have? Where do you want to shoot this? It has become more complex. So I'm hoping to simplify things. Yeah, I think that that's that's really important because we're all wearing so many hats when we do this mm -hmm. stuff, mm -hmm. and it's you know I'm I'm here clicking buttons and lo looking ahead at the comments and all sorts of stuff while I'm having to have a conversation. And this mm -hmm. it does take a little bit of practice to do this, yeah, and you have and to kind of get yourself prepared ahead of time. It does, and you know, a few articles I came across, you know, while I was just researching, you know video podcasting and whether or not to really right. go into it. One of them, you know, that I came across recently was it talked about how video podcasting really does help you build a connection with your audience. You know, right now you're able to see me. I'm a real person. I'm not just right. a voice that helps us build a relationship and potentially a community. Um, you know, closed captioning on video podcasts also helps make the podcast more accessible, which is also being, you know, cheered on for and video clips, you know, so video clips perform really well on social media. Gone are the days where you just have a, you know, picture with an audio file. You really do need to showcase who you're talking to, your guest, yourself, and, and showcase your podcast on social media with video. So you might as well have a video podcast. That's my take. And this article just had some really good points on it. I think there was another article I sent you too that just kind of talked yep. about, oh yeah, I also That's found it. that, you know, just this week, um, Wondery podcasts were now being loaded into three channels on Freevee. So while we're all talking about, you know, uh -huh. video podcasting on YouTube, there's also this push there too. And the more, the more we start seeing video podcasts across all these platforms, you know, they're on Spotify and Apple, the more people are going to feel pressured to to jump in. At least that's right. my opinion. I don't know, Rob, what do you think? Yeah, I think that's that's exactly what I'm seeing as well and 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 why I've made the shift that I have. Um, yeah. I was on the, on the radio. That's how I started back in 1999. I walked into a radio station, mm -hmm. started doing a radio show. That was all audio. I wasn't even thinking about video back then. So mm -hmm. So, but now over the years, we've progressed into so much video being consumed out there. And, and the research has been showing that people are looking to platforms like a YouTube as a place to find podcasts. And pretty much everything that's over on YouTube is video these days. At least the, the content that's finding traction over there is mm -hmm. pretty much all video. There's been audio that's been up there. And I know there's been some recent news that has come out about uh, YouTube music, uh, taking yeah. RSS feeds. Uh, oh, I that, think we had, I think I sent you some visuals for that point. Yeah. And that's, I hope that's kind of a, <laughs> honestly, that's a little bit of a nothing burger to some degree because yeah. I mean, I think if you so, think about yeah, it, tell me what your thoughts are on these headlines. So when yeah, people are reading, you know, that Spotify has, you know, 100,000 video podcasts, what do you think mm -hmm. when you see that headline? Rob? Oh, no, I'm not surprised by that at all. I, mm -hmm. I, uh, Spotify has been expressing the desire to be a video platform for many years now. It mm -hmm. just, they, they, they actually said that they were going to support podcasts and they were going to have video on the platform like six years ago. Um, cause I was talking to them back then and it just, it kind of went two years with nothing happened. And then they finally rolled out the audio stuff and now they're starting to really get into the video again. And then they, you know, they took on Joe Rogan. Mm -hmm. And Joe Rogan really put them on the map when it comes to video because he does mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of video content as well. So, so you know, this has been an evolution that hasn't been happening like just in the last couple of years. This is something that's been really mm -hmm. picking up steam for many years. And like I said earlier in the show, uh, the earlier years of podcasting had a lot of video. There, there was complete mm -hmm. companies um, that were formed just to do video podcasts. And it had nothing to do with YouTube. Mm -hmm. Um, so it was all off of RSS. And then what we saw is YouTube launched in like 2007, 2008, 
and everybody jumped on board, you know, and started publishing over there because mm -hmm. guess what? It was cheaper to publish because there wasn't any um, fee that you had to pay for the bandwidth to d deliver the content. And that was, and you know, there's was. so many, there could be so many new podcasters or video podcasters listening in. So I really wanted to make sure that I brought up just some of the news that some people may be missing. Yeah. You yeah. know, the fact that Google podcasts, you know, is going away. I love this headline, you know, just going to be a graveyard. Yeah. And then with YouTube yeah. taking on the RSS <laughs> uploads, you know, so what, when you see that to me, it says video podcast. Well, that's, that's definitely, so I guess I was hoping right. to get your take. Well, I think it's, it's a little bit of a mixed bag because, um, audio has been able to be up, uploaded through the hosting platforms mm -hmm. for many years. And what happens in that transfer is it becomes a video file because YouTube doesn't support any audio files. Just, mm -hmm. I want to be clear about mm -hmm. that. So nobody misunderstands that YouTube music is going to be hosting audio files. They generally don't. Now, they may for some music artists, mm -hmm. um, but I think that's a high or less likely scenario. Even the, the music will probably be converted into a video file. And, and to, a, to a listener or consumer of this content, they don't really care, actually, at the yeah. end of the day. And, but from a content creator, we need to understand that because that mm -hmm. has an implication for us. And YouTube will host that podcast for us. So most of podcasting today is what they call pass through. So it, it goes to Apple Podcasts, it goes to Spotify, and it it's hosted on a central server that's your web your podcast hosting platform, uh, and then you get all the metrics from that because because you know where it goes. It goes to hundreds of podcast listening apps, but YouTube will capture a copy of it and store it on their server and deliver it through their platform as a video file, even though it's an MP3 they'll convert it from an MP3 to MP4 or whatever their format is that they're, they're, they're actually converting to. So it's, it's, it's kind of a confusing thing that they're doing, but at the end of the day, and if you sum it all down to the bottom line, what is YouTube really strong at? And that's a video, right? They are, they are the, yes. I don't think there's any question that YouTube is the place to go to find any kind of content. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, and I mean, what... we were talking about that, right. Um, I think right. like that next slide kind of just focuses on YouTube. So it might support where you may be going here. Yeah. I mean, you know, you, you and I were talking about how you, why don't you tell us about that? You were saying there was a study and a survey about discoverability on YouTube. Yeah, there I'm going to pull up, uh, well, I can, I can just generally talk about it. I, I don't have a slide, yeah, go for it, for it. But, but it's the research has been showing that, um, that, uh, podcast consumers are viewing YouTube as the number two most popular place mm -hmm. that people are going to, to find a podcast, right? So the industry has been complaining about this issue mm -hmm. around discovery of podcasting, right? Because there's 4 million podcasts of which there's only like 200,000 that are active. Um, so you have a bunch of clutter in all of the listening platforms and it's sometimes hard for people to find content that's being updated, right? And mm -hmm. And the podcast listening platforms like Spotify and Apple haven't done a very good job of, of surfacing content like YouTube does, right? Uh, where they, they track what you like and then they match it up with other content. It's kind of a different kind of consumption model. Uh, but, but increasingly that, you know, those platforms need to adopt a similar model to what YouTube is doing, but that's mm -hmm. kind of off the track a little bit here. <laughs> um, but it's, but it's all tangentially uh, part of what we're seeing here is that YouTube has such an algorithm to help people find content that's so much better than podcasts right now. Mm -hmm. And so people are increasingly seeing big shows over there, big podcasts, you know, like the, the big names that you hear mm -hmm. about are being found on, on YouTube and they've got hundreds of thousands or maybe millions of views. Uh, but they're doing the show just like we are here. You know, it's, it's mm -hmm. uh, on a microphone or they're sitting in a couple of chairs and they're just bantering back and forth like a podcast was. And they're being seen as a podcast, even though maybe that show doesn't even have an RSS feed version of their show, mm -hmm. um, but they're still being seen as a podcast. And that's kind of the, the shift that's happening. And increasingly those big shows are now thinking, okay, maybe I need to put out an audio version of the show and I can pick up some new audience. Mm -hmm. So that's the convergence that I'm talking about here. Yes.
Yeah, I, I would say, you know, going down the road of video podcasting, and if you're on YouTube, you know, it also, I, I have read that it generates ad, higher ad revenue, and it's a lot faster to earn revenue going down mm -hmm. a YouTube route than going just up audio only route. So that was also yeah. interesting, you know, to find. And, and video podcasts, you know, why don't we make that a segue this point here, you know, the fact that video podcasts as of now do not really need to be a heavy lift, like what you're doing with um, StreamYard, you know, it doesn't have to be very complex. No, it doesn't. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, this whole live streaming thing is, is mm -hmm. a, you're, you're adding a lot of complexity. Um, mm -hmm. but, but you have to maybe build up to it. I mean, it's, it, it may not be the place where you start, but you can certainly use a tool like, like a stream yard or whatever to record your show and mm -hmm. export it and do some editing on it and, and then publish it and take the audio out of it, take the video out of it and publish mm -hmm. them separately. Right. So you could upload mm -hmm. it to Spotify. You can upload it to, um, you know, Twitter X, uh, mm -hmm. you could upload it to YouTube as well. So there's, there's a bunch of different um, ways that you can use these tools to reach your audience and what you're mm -hmm. trying to build. So it's, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a huge opportunity, I think. And that's, that's why I'm doing this show is that I think it needs to be talked about and people need to understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. These, these and you're differences. the perfect person for it. So it's good that you're talking about <laughs> uh, it. I was going to say, you know, um, why don't do you, I don't know if you want to bring us both back full and show people how cool that looks. I think you, you had. Uh, yeah. Oh, we can one, do that. We can do that graphic more, too. Right. Yeah. You know, yes. how to launch a video podcast, just some of the quick basics. Some people have asked me, you know, it, it is a little different than audio. You are recording it in a platform, you know, like Rob is saying, you can record it in a variety of different platforms. Um, and then you either need to download it and edit it just like you would with audio. However, there is that added element of now you need to be thinking about audio and video if you are trying to launch the video podcast on YouTube or another platform, and then also trying to put your audio in an RSS feed. So it does add a little extra editing, um, but also yeah. extra planning. I mean, wouldn't you say there's a bit more planning when it comes to video? Yeah, you do need to kind of think about these things. It, it, they are two different forms of media. So you have to really think about it. Well maybe how do I want my audio to be different than the video, right? Mm -hmm. And then also when I'm doing a video and I'm going to take the audio out of the video, what do I need to do in the video to, to make sure that that audio listener comes along the journey, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's sometimes a, a challenge, you know, and I know, you know, like what we're doing here, I'm, I'm showing slides up there and the slide is um, how to launch a video podcast. And it has a couple of bullet points in there. And, and I think what we're going through is we're talking about the, the, um, the topic of each of those mm -hmm. bullet points w w without really calling it out, but it's, exactly. it's, you know, so the audio experience is going to be, um, consistent, but it will be a little different. So, and that's the, the balance that I'm, I'm trying to share is trying to, uh, share this, this balance because the, the video listeners are able to see the comments here. Like, mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, I've been posting up a steady stream of, of comments and thoughts from the, the, the live listening community that's here. That's fantastic. I appreciate all of the comments and thank you so much for posting so many in here. I'm having a difficult time keeping up with them all. <laughs> um, and some of yeah, them, but those of on long. audio can't see all that. Right. Exactly. So, I mean, I they can read to them to, to YouTube. you. But it, it also will get in the way of our conversation to some degree. Uh, it, it depends on what you want to do. And that's, mm -hmm. I set up a section in the show that we can just do questions. Um, mm -hmm. But you can set up in your show outline kind of, you know, almost like break breaks in your, in your content mm -hmm. to say, well, let's take a few questions and, mm -hmm. and we, we can do that. So it depends on what you want to do. Like last week, it, it completely blew the show apart. Um, cause I had all this content lined up for the show and because the, the questions and the, and the activity in the community around the show was so great. Um, I, yeah. I, I just felt like I had to pull them in and I, <laughs> I only got through half of my outline. So, oh my then, goodness. Yeah. Well, what, what do you have in your outline? Let's make sure we hit some points here. <laughs> um, well, I wanted to share also here. I've, okay. I, I've got a. PDF that you are making available off your website. 
Oh, I just um, updated it. <laughs> yeah. It, <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> yeah. I was going to pu pull it up here so people could see it. So yeah, uh, people can go to your website mm -hmm. um, and, and, and grab this PDF. Yeah. And it's, it, it has like a one, two, three, four, five, six step process mm -hmm. for doing a podcast. Right. Yes. And, and I think that there's some great tips in here and things that uh, I don't think we have time to go through all of these things. But I just wanted to to let the audience know that if they went to your website, and I'll, I'll be sharing your website address. Thank you. Um, to to be able to go in and here, I can probably pull that up here. It's uh, always a challenge to keep up with all this stuff, but I thought I did post it in here. Oh yeah, it's here. Pull it up yeah, here. Yeah, thank you. I mean, so, you know, I think you know with this PDF, I I just actually updated it today. So guys, if you are grabbing the PDF, you'll it will look a little different um, than this than this version. It doesn't. The content's the same. It's just more of the formatting. I just changed a little bit, mm -hmm. just to keep consistency. You know, I'm more into the black and white colors now. So <laughs> <laughs> that's why. There were but, green and black know, in I, my case. Right. <laughs> I had a lot of people ask me, you know, how do you start podcasting? And it was surprising how many people would come to me and ask, well, I have this really great idea and I don't know how to make it into a show. And I really feel like it needs to be a show. Mm -hmm. So I started to put together all the questions I had asked myself when I started my first podcast, which is called What Do You Do Exactly? What Do You Do Exactly was born out of a passion to help people. As I saw media layoffs across the industry, I wanted to inspire them with, um, you know, just a look at different types of jobs and to hear from people who maybe left the industry and went out yeah. on their own. Yeah. So podcasting, let's just say, is for is very entrepreneurial. And I find the more I do it, the more entrepreneurial I become, the more independent I feel. So, right. you know, no matter how many listeners you have on a podcast, it's always worth going for because you really do see yourself grow as a person, just yeah. podcasting. And I know that may sound right. like an overstatement, but it's true. And um, I started to podcast with uh, what you do exactly. I was recording it as a video podcast, but I never really did much with the video. I just would make, um, it was like a clip bin on YouTube. You know, there's not many people clicking on a clip bin. Um, so <laughs> when I decided to shift gears and really focus on a podcast that was video first and YouTube first, not RSS mm -hmm. first, yep. I really decided I needed a new name and a new focus. And so on Cam Ready, as I mentioned a little earlier, is all about trying to help people become more comfortable on camera, you know, with social media and now video podcasting. You know, there's a lot to learn and a lot to know. And with over 20 years experience in TV news, I felt like I might as well try to share some of that. Um, and then I also try to help people who are professionals that want to be podcast guests or really want to be on television. And I kind of walk through tips. But the PDF he just mentioned mm -hmm. really is meant to help you brainstorm and think through the idea you have for your podcast before you go and invest all the time. Because yeah. you really need to know what your concept is you know, the style, how do you want to present this? Are you going to be a solo podcaster with a co-host? Are you going to have a narrative podcast? Or are right. you going to yeah. have a call-in show like Rob here? I mean, there's a lot of different ways that you can um, podcast. So it's important to think through all that and then also start to really brainstorm the time commitment because it can be time consuming. And a lot of people don't think about that. Yeah. Oh, it can be. It can be. <laughs> Yeah, and it definitely helps to plan ahead a little bit and create yes. like a, you know, a flexible, yeah, I use Google Docs to create my show outlines. Um, mm -hmm. So I can, I, I can have a, a, you know, a path for the, for the show. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't mean I have to stick to it. it. doesn't mean I have to do everything in it. It just gives me kind of like a guide. Um, it's like, you know, following a map, right? That, mm -hmm. you know, you could take mm -hmm. a different trail if you want to, but in the end, it's going to get you to the end. <laughs> and, Do you mind if I weigh in on that? I mean, you yeah. know, as a as a TV producer, you know, by trade, it is so important that if you are hosting or if you're a guest to really truly think through everything you may want to say or mm -hmm. may want to ask. And, you know, he's saying he has an outline, but like your outline could truly be all the questions you hope to ask. It could mm -hmm. be 
bullet points, you know, of things that you want to make sure you reference, or you could even script out an entire intro and just kind of right. read it cold or skip around. But mm -hmm. really the outline is the bread and butter to your conversation. Right. And what I found over the years of being, mm -hmm. uh, being a content creator, at least on the radio and stuff, I, thought, mm -hmm. I used to create these elaborate six page scripts of sorts, uh, for, <laughs> for my show back in the early days. Now I'll create like a multi-page, but it, it, what I find is I'll wind up memorizing um, yeah. parts of it so I don't have to look at it anymore. It's still there. It's just mm -hmm. I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm thinking about what's coming up next. And it's like as a host, you kind of have to get in that mindset where you're <laughs> thinking about what's what's coming up next, what you want to present next, while also being able to share ideas and concepts and and mm -hmm. knowledge that's helpful to your, your your viewers. And that's why it's so helpful, actually, for me to have a guest, because because when I hand it off to you, you can share insights, deep insights mm -hmm. while I'm thinking about what I need to do next. So <laughs> exactly. But, but I also need to listen too, because I mean, that's, that's where those conversations become more interesting is when you share an idea and then it like sparks something in my mind mm -hmm. and, and it takes us down a, a another path that um, mm -hmm. I hadn't thought of before. So, yeah. so it's, it's powerful on that side. Mm-hmm. I so I wanted to share also uh, that YouTube put out a a, a study. Um, yes, that's the study. Yeah, it's called uh, it's called the YouTube Culture and Trends Report mm -hmm. 2023, and I thought it was interesting. And mm. and the key findings out of this was that um, that 54 percent of the respondents to this survey would rather watch a breakdown video of an event than the event itself, hmm. which I think is a, it's an interesting takeaway that really speaks to the growth of independent media when it comes to video, right? Hmm. So, so, you know, it, as you came from mainstream media, right in there, that, that would be the event video, right? Um, mm -hmm. Where the, the, the direction that the media landscape is heading toward is that the, the content that's being increasingly produced is um, not like an original source. It's like a derivative source. It's, mm -hmm. it's giving um, maybe a different perspective. Right. So I don't know what you think about that, um, that they'd rather watch you know, a breakdown show or is it just the fact that they want a summary of what's happening? I think people are just, you know, so used to being able to scroll through their phones to get as much information as possible that I think, you know, really absorbing a full length show is a bit harder these days. I mean, someone was saying like, um, she's writing actually, um, a potential client. She was saying she's writing a, you know, articles for a website and people don't really read through an article much anymore. So I think cons if that's to the point, you yeah, know, the I think consumption it's kind is of... just different. The way people consume has been changed right. by social media. Yes. Yeah. It's almost like a summary, right? It's almost mm -hmm. like they want to get the 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 thoughts of someone that they trust that will give them feedback about what mm -hmm. what it all means, right? And yeah, and especially if it's, it's somebody that they trust, you know. And it and this gets back to what this this next slide of the YouTube study talks about is creators and fans, mm -hmm. right? So you have creators that are closer to fans than a part of the news, right? So you you know. And maybe there's more trust there. I don't know if that trust is justified necessarily mm. in all circumstances, but but I do think that um, hmm. that it's it's a reflection of popular culture. It's it's also a, a reflection of the opportunity of independent creators to contribute media in the landscape, and and maybe why we're seeing you know less people paying attention to mainstream media. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't you know, know and. I think you bring up yeah, some really good points and yeah, you know, I haven't read the whole study, so I can't sit here and say I'm an expert in what yeah. is being laid out here, but just, you know, coming from linear television news, I had yeah. this pull to podcast and this, you know, pull to YouTube because I hadn't really explored that as a producer, you know, when right. you are in um, such a, you know, you're in the mainstream media, 
I guess that's how we're going to define it here on, you know, 24 yeah. seven news, <laughs> you aren't really focusing on those areas. You become more of a specialist in what you're doing. You know, I was a specialist in putting together live shows with reporters and guests and an anchor and scripts and really trying to write in a way that the audience is going to be engaged and put up banners. But I never mm -hmm. really had the opportunity to deep dive in these other mediums. And now that I have, I find myself even, I don't, I don't really turn on the news as much. I'll turn mm -hmm. to Alexa and say, Hey, Alexa, what's the news? And she'll yeah. pop between ABC and CBS and that's what she likes. So I let her be. And yeah. That's it. I, yeah. <laughs> I get mo most of my news now from um, um, X Twitter and YouTube. Uh, quite yeah. honestly, I don't watch mm -hmm. mainstream media mm -hmm. at all anymore. So, you yeah, know, like this, sad. this, this kind of, um, tragic shooting that just happened up in Maine. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't even hear about it. So oh, I wasn't, wow. I wasn't you know, paying, I heard, paying attention to those sources. I like, heard because my husband saw it and it could pop up in his social media feed. Mm -hmm. And instead of turning on the TV, I found myself online Googling, using the Google and <laughs> seeing what was the latest. <laughs> yeah. And I wound up watching a video from ABC just because that's what popped yeah. up in my feed. I got the latest and I was like, okay, I'm read in. It, it's just a whole new world. After being someone who was a, a basically addicted to the news, I was on Twitter, reading articles every day, yeah. consuming every single media channel to not really doing much of that at all. It It's actually kind of like, I don't know, not a rebirth, but like a, it's really refreshing. Um, I also cut cable and I now use some type of box. I won't give my secret away, but I can watch cable. <laughs> oh, you're, you're one of those cable hackers. Huh? No. <laughs> it's not a hacker. I bought it at Walmart. <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. Um, but yes, yeah, so, you know, this, this YouTube study that's out, it, it, it's kind of a, a reflection of kind of what's been happening. You know, mm -hmm. fans are getting more involved in, various aspects around the world. Formats are expanding. There, there's different forms mm -hmm. of content that are out there. AI is becoming a bigger impact. And, and actually, um, the, the creation using mm -hmm. AI tools is, mm -hmm. is going to have an impact on video. I mean, it's clearly mm -hmm. coming. And it, it says here, 82% of people online, 18 to 44 years old, say they have posted video content online. So 82% of 18 to 44 year olds have posted content on online um, just in the last year. Yeah. It's so, no longer, you know, where you'd say, oh, grandma's not on. No, grandma's on and she's doing TikToks. Right. <laughs> <laughs> she's probably spending way too much time scrolling through it though, but right. Or they're posting a ton of memes. I see that. Too. Yeah. But you and, know, yeah, it's, it's very interesting that that many individuals are now consuming and also posting. Creating. Creating, mm -hmm. right? Creating. They're they're becoming creators. Mm -hmm. So this whole creator economy is is really becoming mainstream now. Um, for mm -hmm. most of the time that I've been involved in podcasting or media, working with with YouTube, yeah, my YouTube channel's been around for almost seventeen years. Mm -hmm. So um, so yeah, I've been involved in it a long time. Um, the consumption side of stuff too. Sixty eight percent of people survey say they watch videos about a specific topic that they are into in multiple formats or in multiple, you know, places, uh, short oh, form, wow. long form podcasts and live streams. Mm. So we're pushing 70%. I I'd say that's, that's as mainstream as, you know, we may get, you know, I mean, that's, I, I don't know if it's going to get much bigger than that. So it's interesting. It is. But also the fact that, you know, you're talking about short form, long form podcast live streaming, what it all has in common in a lot of these cases is streaming online, you mm -hmm. know, it, it, from videos to movies, people are turning more toward that. And, you know, that's been known, but it's interesting to see that that's 68%. Yeah. And then this, this slide is really interesting too. And it does have a little bit of a connection to the music that I play on this podcast is because these, these new animated videos that are, that are showing up in, in places like YouTube and other places are getting millions and millions of views <laughs> of these things. I mean, I like what you're seeing on here. They're, they're like very soft music, just kind of like what, what would I play in the beginning of this show? And actually that is the music that's used in these, um, 
these type of videos uh, mm -hmm. because it's soothing, it's very repetitive. Uh, and those type of videos are finding huge audiences too. I mean, some of the type of video that people are putting out there is is really astonishing and and how it's garnering so much attention. Um, you mm -hmm. know, even like fireplace videos, right? Like in the Christmas time, you can yeah. put on your, your big screen, kind of mm -hmm. like a repeating video of a fireplace. So let's say you don't have a fireplace in your apartment. You can certainly pull it up. Um, and, mm -hmm. and those creators are making money um, because those things are, are considered, uh, you know, they could have ads in them. So mm -hmm. it's, it's just, it just kind of gives you some perspective on this, the spectrum of this. And there's no reason why these couldn't be, um, I mean, these won't be video or audio podcast, but, but it'll be, it, it's just what's interesting about the content creation uh, space right now and how it's, it's expanding. And I agree with this survey. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it says here, 54% of people survey say they would prefer to watch creators breaking down major events, right? W which is what we were talking about either yes. uh, earlier. Um, so, and then it says I mean, 40 I do too. And I've seen, you know, there's this, right. um, Oh gosh, it's called Zivi Media. It's more focused on millennials and they have more of a youthful vibe yeah. on TikTok. I I enjoy it. Yeah. And it, it says 47% of Gen Z, which mm -hmm. is the the younger yeah, generation, mm -hmm. 18 to 24, which is is an interesting parallel here too, have watched videos made by fans of a specific content or artist. Right. So it's not the primary artist sometimes that matters. It's the spinoff that are done by the fans that are that can talk about things that the original content creator can't do. So it's it's or aren't willing to do. Right. Um, it's an interesting spin on it. And the Gen Z um, demo is actually the fastest growing podcast consuming audience right now. It's it's picking up audience in podcasts, I'm talking about audio podcasts, mm -hmm. but as you can see, it's, it, it's an important demographic for the video side too. So that younger demo demographic wow. is all in on, on That's online interesting. media. Yeah. Right. And it says, uh, let's say 87% of people survey say, uh, across any streaming service, they watch at least four content formats YouTube offers in the last 12 months. Um, so it'd be like stories, um, fan type programs. So there, there, there's different kind of types of content that people are mm -hmm. consuming on there and the Gen Z is back in there too. So, so anyway, I guess we probably had enough of this, uh, this YouTube survey. <laughs> so, so there's a lot to it, which is great. It, we, we can probably move on from that, but, um, I'm going to pull it back here and put us back up here again. And, well, let's let's kind of dive into the nuts and bolts a little bit um, about your recommendations for you know how you would set this up. So let's say you wanted to do a a, a video podcast, mm -hmm. but also put it out as a audio show. What what kind of equipment do you think, and what kind of a setup uh, do you think actually would be effective, right? And I think that there's a spectrum here, right? It's what there you is. can afford mm -hmm. and what what really I, I think increasingly the market is expecting of video mm -hmm. creators. And mm -hmm. and given that you came out of mainstream media, there's some some fundamentals that mainstream media does with their video productions. Mm -hmm. I don't know that are entirely applicable to podcasters, but I think that there's some principles there. So yeah, I don't know if you I have mean, any thoughts on that. I think, you know, right now with the space heading into more video podcasts being produced, it's important to make sure that you are focusing not only on your microphone, but your lights. Um, you know, you don't have to spend a lot of money on good lights. You know, I'm using two soft white lights and I also have a ring light that's a little bit further back. Yeah. Um, and, you know, those three lights are what I use, but you could really just buy one. It depends on your space. Um, now, if you're talking, if you want to have a mobile space like myself, I want to be able to podcast anywhere. So mm -hmm. I try to make my background as if you're welcomed into my home, you know, so I have a small room in my house that's toward the front of the house that we never really knew what to do with. So I'm in that room now. Um, it has a lot of light, that natural light. So you also want to be looking for natural light. 
an open space because having depth does help or having something like yourself where it's, you know, a bookshelf or shelving that has some type of display and lighting that does help. Um, I did, uh, I do have like a chair you'll see behind me. There's like this gray chair. You see the gray chair behind me. Yeah. If you're yeah. watching this, you see it. Um, so there's this gray chair behind me and I have two of them and I'll sometimes put those behind me while I'm podcast video podcasting to kind of give it a different look or, you know, I'll turn my camera just a little bit. You see, there's a mirror there. Yeah. So I'll sometimes have like a light that shines into the mirror so that it gives like a background feel. It really depends on what you're looking for. But what's so great about video podcasting is that it's not TV. It's not. Right. You know, right. and so it doesn't you get have to, to be, be right. Uh, yeah, you get yeah. to be a bit more authentic. You can be more creative. You can share those behind the scene moments and people will probably appreciate you for it more. Right. I'm kind of interested in this whole vlog format. And I feel like there's a way to really tap into that with a narrative podcast, you know, where you're doing maybe some type of vlog video podcast that then tees up into a guest. I feel mm -hmm. like there's a lot of different ways that you can build on a, a video podcast. Um, you know, and if you are trying to be more TV focused and you want to have a studio, you know, you just have to make sure that you have the space for it and you really think through all the elements because you're going to get bored if it's just one background. So you want to be able to have alternative backgrounds, alternative spaces, especially if you're going to have, you know, a video podcast mm -hmm. and a YouTube channel to build your community. You may want to have two different backgrounds. So maybe half your room is one, half your room is another. Um, that's a way to kind of tap into the TV mind, which is trying to be as efficient as possible with every space. And yeah. also thinking about portability. You know, I use um, this mic because I actually tend to enjoy standing. I also have a lav mic that I have um, found to be very good. And I'll sometimes walk around and record just so I can really truly feel myself on camera. Mm -hmm. um, and then I would say, you know, outside of that, you're tech not like with your equipment you do want to have a desk that might be you know a standing one like i'm at a, a desk that allows me to stand mm -hmm. um and i found mine at home depot so it's a great <laughs> little option uh -huh. and then always recording um you know your video podcast or your setup from your cell phone in like a corner um so that you can also use that for content just trying to think through all those things to make sure that you have everything you need. And I'm sure some of our um, listeners or in the chat might have better ideas too, but I just wanted to make sure that I shared some of mine. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I have a lot of the, the, the same things. I, I did play around with green screens for a while when I was getting started with all this. And I, I, I have one of those big oval ones. Oh, wow. Yeah, have, yeah, yeah. But I have to put it so close to my back for it to mm -hmm. get, to cover the whole screen. Mm -hmm. Um, but I have done episodes where, where I took a photograph of my real background and I just superimposed it and nobody oh, could tell wow. the difference. <laughs> yep. So, so <laughs> why do it, I guess, is the question, right? But, but you <laughs> could do it um, in, if you had to do it like a, like a remote show or something like that. So mm -hmm. if you had to be somewhere mm -hmm. else, you know, some of the platforms, you know, enable you to put up a kind, kind of like a, you know, a, a background like a green screen kind of thing mm -hmm. without a green screen. So, but also, you know, having that, if you're on the road or just that um, keeps continuity with your mm -hmm. expectation, your show, all this yeah. behind me is, is real. And, mm -hmm. I, and those lights back there, I can change color. So it's, I can, I can adapt. I know them. I've seen it purple right. before, right? I think. Right. <laughs> right. So I changed this color and it just by chance <laughs> matches the, the, the underlay that I have. Yeah. But now color. you need the green because of the graphics. That's exactly, exactly. I mean, you could go exactly. yellow, I guess, yeah. if you yeah. wanted. <laughs> I could. I could go pink if I wanted go, to. Maybe, it's all right. But... <laughs> you could go red for Christmas. Right. <laughs> for but the Christmas holidays. <laughs> but that kind of stuff is kind of fairly advanced. Yes. I, I, mm -hmm. That was one of the last things that I did was add that kind of color capability because it, it's not that expensive, but it does take mm -hmm. a lot of work. Um, you kind of have to get it, you know, you have to get the right type of string LED lights that have mm -hmm. that ability and you got to install it, you know, and that's the oh. challenge. 
speaking of light, that made me think. So what I'm also, another idea, if you're looking to just be a portable video podcasting set and you really want to dress up your background, you know, mm -hmm. getting some of those string lights that you can put oh, in yeah. maybe the tree behind me or, you know, hanging them in the background. Christmas it, lights. It can really there, just add some dimension. Christmas lights you say? Here. Well, there, there, there's Christmas lights in all the hardware stores now. So you can just yeah. go down and get a string of white Christmas lights or something and you can put Take them in advantage. there. Take advantage. Yeah, <laughs> use it. And, you know, you don't have to really spend a lot. That's really what it comes right. down to, which is what we just keep saying. But, you know, the other thing is you always want to think about audio and yeah. your space, right? Like right now right. I'm in the front of my room. Uh, front of my house and everyone is trying to get the dogs out and eat dinner so you may hear background noise but when i'm podcasting or video podcasting i'm usually alone you know it's a house right. of silence but right. if you are someone that is trying to do this and thinking portability i want to be able to do this anywhere you really want to be able to be in a room that has a door yeah. so that you can close it and try to muffle right. out as much sound as possible I yep. mean, Rob, it, wouldn't you say that would be good for those that might be looking for ideas? Yeah, I think um, it, it, it's always best to do your show in a room that's mm -hmm. carpeted, if you can do it, or get yeah, a, carpeted get a large, uh, you know, throw carpet and and then also mm -hmm. get pictures up on your wall. I mean, I mean, you can mm -hmm. look behind me and you, you can see I've I've put up some some inexpensive sound panels around, plus mm -hmm. pictures and furniture and things like that. And it, and you want to populate your room with things that will diffuse the sound, right? So you don't mm -hmm. get an echo effect. And I also use what's called a dynamic microphone, mm -hmm. uh, not a condenser microphone, though. I I did use a condenser microphone with my radio show in the early days, and it was because, kind of, frankly, I didn't know any better. And and it had terrific sound, and I really liked it, but they were like $650 microphones, each one of them. And oh. I had like, like three of them or something like that. But But I had to sound buffer my bedroom. Um, in order to use these things, I couldn't even pick up a pen uh, or or move my paper. So I I would hold paper like this and read my outline. Oh and it wow! Wasn't video, right? And I'd be very careful about how I handled the paper, also it would come mm -hmm. across from the microphone because that's how sensitive it was. And so, but but these these dynamic mics, you, know, mm -hmm. you can bang them around a little bit and they won't do anything. Yeah, I mean, I hope you're not. Do you hear what's happening in my kitchen right now? No, I don't. <laughs> No, um, that so that then brings a, me. That then, <laughs> it's a dynamic mic, is what you're using there too. Yes, so. but just in case. So yeah. you know, I, I would just say also with your cameras, like I have a Canon. That's usually what I use. But today mm -hmm. I decided to use my computer camera, um, just so that I could be a bit more portable with where I wanted to stand. And yep. my other camera's a little bit further away, and I was having issues with my yep. um, connection cord. You know, to the to the laptop based on where I wanted the computer to be so I could read some of my yeah. notes. And, you know, you just have to be flexible um, yeah. when it comes to that. And I always recommend trying to have, you know, I I'm going to throw out a brand, but Elgato is a great brand if you're looking yeah. for 4K. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I do want to say, too, that really what's most important is the mm -hmm. content that you're bringing. Yes, so yes, yes. You can, you can focus on these areas. Um, you know, you can go overboard with it. I think it it kind of depends on your your budget, mm -hmm. but I've seen many very successful YouTube channels that have very basic backgrounds. They, mm -hmm. they they didn't invest a lot in them. It was really because the content was compelling, and and that is really where you need to put most of your focus. Um, mm -hmm. If you're weak on the content, then maybe the visuals maybe is mm -hmm. more beneficial uh, because yeah. maybe it's it, it's kind of like eye candy, right? Yeah. So, and I mean, yeah. you know, speaking of like the content, when you are producing a video podcast, you really do get the opportunity to take your show, if it, especially if it's like portable show, you can go anywhere. You know, if you want to take your podcast and be at a conference or in a live event, you know, you can as long as you are prepared to handle all the background noise. But mm -hmm. if you have the equipment and you keep it tight, you can really travel. And that's what's great. There's so many options out there to make it really filled with value, right? And that's what your podcast, your video podcast needs to be is filled with value tips, which is what we're working on right now is, is talking through ideas to help you guys. Yeah. Are, yeah. Are you using any um, like AI tools or anything like that, you know, so, for your productions or do you recommend any r right now? 
So I just had a really long conversation about AI, and I really do think that it's helpful if you are looking for YouTube tags, SEO, headlines, um, description ideas. My only suggestion is if you're going to go that route, put it in your voice, you know, mm -hmm. make sure that it is you because you don't want to always sound too cookie cutter, right? right? In your descriptions and your headlines. So just make sure you tweak it. But I truly feel it is wonderful. As someone who has been a, a lead writer and worked with a team, I always appreciated having a script that was already written. And then I just got to go into it and kind of make it better or, in my opinion, better and <laughs> enhance it. So AI is that for me. It's like the, the beginning of what I'm going to end up with. The first draft. Yeah, I I use AI quite a bit too to mm -hmm. to generate that kind of stuff. But I always go through it, edit it, um, mm -hmm. make sure it's not um, <laughs> in the wrong context of what I want to put out, right? Or yeah. it's it's not accurate with what what the intent was of the mm -hmm. of the content. Yeah. It, AI makes mistakes, you know. I mean, yeah. it, it's still making making mistakes with images that it generates too, and and. I've seen that evolve as well. It's getting better. And mm -hmm. that's just an indicative layer of what's happening with AI. It's continually mm -hmm. getting better and <laughs> it's doing it pretty, pretty rapidly. So, you know, where it is two years from now will be dramatically better than where it is now. Uh, and that's when yes. it starts to get into this realm of, of being, being a little scary to what's possible Correct. there once mm -hmm. these tools reach that, that level of complexity. But, um, so let's let's take a, another kind of turn here, and maybe mm -hmm. let's talk about some questions uh, before we run out of time. And then I, I wanted to do the um, the giveaway here, mm -hmm. so that would be the the toward the end of the program. So stick around, keep keep with us here, and you might get a chance to win a puddles duck or a uh, or a pillow. So. You know, that you can rest your weary head after your long um, video podcast recording. So on your duck. Right, <laughs> on your duck. So there's a few questions in here that, that were kind of uh, longer. And let me um, see if I can find some of them here. Mm -hmm. And um, most of them are kind of welcome to the show. I think I've displayed most of them. Um, let's see. This one. Oh, could I? I saw Crazy Kid make a comment I wanted to weigh in on. Let me Crazy see. Crazy Kid. Can... Let's see where that one is. <laughs> yeah. That's so Crazy Kid 949. Cra Crazy Kid. Let's find it here. He Crazy. said, I think an easy way to become uh, more comfortable. Uh, see there, it is. there it there is. It is. Uh, he says, I think an easy way to become more comfortable in front of the camera is to put a picture of your best friend under the camera so you can talk comfortably to your friend. And I'm gonna add to that, it's a great idea. You need to just look straight into that camera as yes, if you look are looking out the duck right here. into space or at it, <laughs> that it is the duck. And you know, just look out and confidently speak into that camera and you'll be fine. One um, friend of mine who's also worked at CNN and helps people she uh, become better speakers, she was saying, you also want to think of your fondest memories before you go on camera so that you always have a cheerful mindset. And one thing I always say is smile. You know, if you're unsure and nervous, you can start to kind of cheer yourself up and get yourself mm -hmm. in the mood just by smiling and making yourself laugh. And if you are trying to, you know, really perfect being on camera and you're recording yourself and you're like, gosh, I still don't look right. Keep going. Record yourself in front of mirror, uh, in front of windows, different lighting and really find your best angle. And then I always recommend that you play it back, hear yourself, actually listen to it, critique yourself, have someone else look at it, but also just be yourself and try to be yourself. My husband said when I first started my podcast, I would put on a high school theater voice. And I, you know, I had to stop that, you know, and just <laughs> try to talk my, like myself and not change my voice. <laughs> so you guys will get it. You'll start to become more comfortable. Yeah, no, I, I agree that. And then I think we had another comment in here from 
dawn, it looks like. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I'm truly grateful for StreamYard. My studio at uh, Clear Channel was 26000 a year. I'm not quite sure what that means, but uh, for, oh, okay, for StreamYard, right? For the professional package at, at StreamYard was tremendous. So I basically have the same tools from a professional studio at home. Um, so yeah, I think it takes a little practice. Um, mm -hmm. but, yes, it does. And I'm, I'm still learning it too. I've been working with, with StreamYard for about now close to five, five, six months now. And, and I'm still learning all the bells and whistles. And every week on their Sunday show, the founders gauge, they talk about what's, what's new. Uh, and it's like every week there's a new feature coming out. Right. <laughs> so, so it's, yeah. it's really kind of, exciting to see this platform evolve. I mean, I've been involved in the podcasting medium a long time and mm -hmm. it's, that's what was just so exciting about what, what I was seeing happen with this platform. Um, and then I think, let's see here. There, there's a couple other, well, let's see if there's no one. I wouldn't uh, know that. Sorry. I don't know that one either. So, um, unfortunately, um, okay. Beauty bubble. It says here fr framing yourself, into your overall shot is a good idea mm. as well. And that uh, your set background can be gently modified, say a new pillow on, on the chair or a restyling of accessories, mm -hmm. to keep it fresh. So that's, mm -hmm. that's probably good advice. Uh, you know, you can move the, the pieces on the deck around yes. a little bit to make it different all the time, right? One thing I've wanted to do is paint the room half white, half black, and then I can have my table in the middle and be, you know, moving around and have different colored accessories that will match both sides. But, you know, a girl can dream. Yes. I love that yes. idea. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I have kind of like an off white um, colored mm -hmm. wall. So yes. these lights, I can change the color of the wall any color I want. So that's the power yeah, you're of lucky these little lights. It. Right. Right. <laughs> So, but, uh, I'm trying to think, yeah, did you want to share anything else? Uh, that yeah. So I would just or, say, you know, with the move into video podcasting mm -hmm. and, you know, just really the expectations a lot of people have on businesses and brands being on social media, I just think it's important that, you know, you, everyone kind of brushes up on their on-camera appearance. You know, just a few tips, you know, before you're going to be speaking on camera, I highly recommend having like warm water versus tea, using like a throat lozenge, even if you're not coughing, just to really get yourself warmed up and ready. Sometimes it's always good to even do some vocal exercises just so that you're not hitting that mic cold. Mm -hmm. um, if you are going to be scripting out an intro, I always recommend scripting it out, reading it out loud before you record as well. So you get some practice. Um, I would say, you know, just a few other tips just to help you get ready and be more on cam ready is also with video podcasting. You may want to start thinking about what colors look best on you, you before you do go on camera and try different looks and outfits that may, you know, really tell your whole story with this much <laughs> visible, it's always right. hard, but sometimes you want to add a little personality and you only have a top. So it's good to shop around and find some looks that really speak to your, um, your vibe and, yep. and always show up ready for anything with talking points and, um, having your, your thoughts really planned out. That's what mm -hmm. I would say. And you know, one thing that really does help also leaning in, if you are, um, someone who tends to stand and get like a, double chin instead of standing upright just lean in just a little lean forward really just a little bit and i think that helps too now i know we have this giveaway so let's get going on it what do you got rob well i'm trying to get it to to work here and it's it doesn't appear so let me um i'm gonna let all me right you change. keep messing around let me see yeah. um <laughs> so yeah i mean a few other things that I would say when it comes to video podcasting, you really have an opportunity to get as creative as you want. If you're using a StreamYard or another platform and you want to incorporate sound bites, sound bites is sound on tape. If you mm -hmm. want to record, maybe, you know, interview someone and it's only two to three minutes and you want to use it in your intro, you can yeah. actually cut that and get it ready and play it out live in a platform like this. Um, and I don't think many people realize that you can, 
you can do those things. So I just wanted to make sure I bring up some of those points. You know, we have graphics on screen, right. but you can also play music as Rob yeah. has done in the beginning. And yeah. there's also videos and gnats and you can really dress up your screen and some of the terms that, you know, are more industry standard is, you know, a SOT, a sound, sound on tape, VO, video, uh, voiceover, sorry. And yeah. so if you start to shorthand, it'll also help you when you put together your notes. <laughs> yeah, that's true. All right. Where are we at with this? Well, let's, uh, if you're watching this <laughs> and you're interested in getting some StreamYard swag, um, um, how the tool is supposed to work, and I'm hoping that it, it works for me here, is that uh, just type in um, the, the hashtag uh, podcasting tip and into the comment field. And what that'll do is that'll um, create entries into the, the drawing. And so it, if you're listening to this, and it looks like we've got like 31 live listeners right now. So if, if you guys, each of you, if you want to potentially win, uh, some swag from StreamYard. Uh, go ahead and jump in there and post uh, the hashtag podcasting tip. And uh, that'll enter you into the giveaway. And I'll, I will push that draw button after everybody has submitted their, their entry. And from that, uh, it randomly selects a, a winner and you will be mailed a duck after I get your, your, um, your contact information. So, so that is how it works. So it looks like we're up to eight entries so far, nine. So keep them coming, keep them coming. <laughs> so, and, um, and it's terrific. And I'll probably try what, while the entries come in, let's, let, let's kind of, uh, kind of wrap it up a little bit here on the, on the show. Cause we've gone over an hour and I know. Danny, so was there anything I, you wanted to talk about? We didn't get to. Uh, well, of course, there's a million things that I want to talk about. <laughs> it's just, you know, I can only do so much. I mean, I could do a two-hour show easy. That's easy. that's the show I do every every yes. Wednesday. It's called yes. the the New Media Show. You can see it behind me on mm -hmm. the wall. But uh, that's a 90-minute show every week where we talk about the podcast industry. It's not so much like a how-to or tips type of mm -hmm. a program as this is. Uh, but it's it's really talking about what's happening in the industry and it can be a little controversial. You know, this whole topic of, of YouTube has been kind of a hot topic in the industry mm -hmm. um, generally because of all the things I talked about on the earlier part of this program. But, yeah. um, but if it looks like everybody has entered the, uh, looks like some are still coming in the drawing. It looks like we're up to 15 entries so far. So mm -hmm. uh, if I don't want to leave anybody out. Um, so when it stops going up, then a few minutes after that, I will, uh, I will click the draw button <laughs> and we will get to a winner. And then it's just a matter of, of you sending me an email, I think is probably, probably the right thing to do. And then I can forward that over to the StreamYard team and they can get you out. And I need your, um, uh, your address. Uh, if you could send that to Rob, um, dot greenly at gmail.com if i can find the uh, stream yard interface here i think we're up to 16 entries now and uh let's see here if i can put up on the screen my email address that you can use to let me know your address and i, I will forward it to the stream yard team and get you your swag so it's just rob dot greenly at, at gmail.com and then here's jamie's uh contact information as well. So you can follow up with her. Uh, so I'm assuming that the best place to keep an eye on you is um, on camera ready.com. Is that correct? Yeah. On camera ready.com. On it's cam, okay. Have, on camera, camera ready, <laughs> not camera ready. Sorry about that. I didn't want to go. You're good. I'm putting uh, it in the chat. I'm putting it in the chat too. But on, you know, okay, I think okay. Here it is. I've here, been on Instagram more regularly, but it is um, camera ready. Oh, I did on cam ready, and you know, on cam ready is uh is my website. But yeah, I'm I live in I'm living on Instagram these days, and YouTube <laughs> shorts. I'm really testing out YouTube shorts. I get like a few followers or a few likes and a few followers, but. YouTube shorts are hard right now. I need someone to give me some advice on those. <laughs> yeah. So I think we're up to 16 entries. It looks like oh, it's yeah. kind of capped out right you now. <laughs> um, so let's, let's, let's do the drawing and then we, we can celebrate uh, the, 
the winner here a little bit here. Let's see if I can get your, why am I not able to, okay. Let's see here. That's not, that's not right. But anyway, uh, I think it's up above. That's why there it is. I'm going to get it off the screen so people don't get the wrong address. So, um, okay, here's the drawing. All right, Jamalia Martin, thank you so much. It's great to, to have a winner. Congratulations. You are now swagged on the part of StreamYard. <laughs> You've been swagged. And thank you, everybody else, for, for entering. And, and come back and check out next week, uh, and we will give away more. So you have a chance to win some swag. I'm going to get some different ones. So like they, they have sweatshirts and sweaters and hats and mugs and all sorts of stuff. So we'll, we'll scatter it around a little bit. So, but, uh, Jamila, uh, send me an email to, to rob.greenly at gmail.com with your address and, uh, any other information you want to share with me. If you're a StreamYard user today and share me with me, the show that you're doing and would love to, to, to check it out. So, and any mm -hmm. other thoughts that you might have. So thank you so much, Jamie, for, for joining me here. I did want to share one last thing with mm -hmm. everybody here. I, I know I'm just too full of content here, but um, there is a newsletter that, that I want everybody to be aware of. It's called pod news Yes. Um, that, that maybe you haven't heard of before. Um, so let me see if I can, find it here and I was going to pull it up on the screen so you could see it. So this is a, this is a daily newsletter that goes out to about 30,000 of the mm -hmm. podcast um, industry. So if you want to keep up with the current news on what, what's happening in the podcast industry, uh, this is a great newsletter to go. It's free. It's at podnews.net and uh, it's a great, I'm, I'm close friends with the, the editor of it and he does a terrific job. He's actually lives in Australia of all places. So he has a very international view. And so this, it, it, it's got events listed in here. It's got mm -hmm. uh, the latest job opportunities. And then each day it has a link to each of the, the newsletters. So like, uh, this is this is another one that this well, this is the same one that I showed you earlier, but it's talking about Acast and French podcasters, mm -hmm. right? So th there really isn't any other newsletter that gives you that depth of knowledge, and this will really help you have a grasp of the scope of podcasting and the issues of podcasting that you need to consider. Like this mm -hmm. newsletter has done a terrific job of covering uh, all the developments with YouTube and their, their embracement of podcasts, so you get all those resources. And I'm not getting paid to promote them here. The, this is just, I just feel strongly that this is a, mm -hmm. a newsletter that everybody that's involved in podcasting should um, get every day because it's not going to cost you anything. So you might as well get it. So, you know, that's, can that's I add on that? The editor is a great guy. And if you sent him Scribble. information right. on your podcast, he may even feature you. So yeah, because he does have an area down here in the down at the bottom mm -hmm. that will actually list podcasts, right? The podcast yeah. news. So, so, so if you send it to him, um, there's a good chance that he might run it, you know, mm -hmm. um, and get you a little exposure. So you can see all of the companies that support him from the industry. Mm -hmm. so, so you know he's got a lot of support in the industry. So he's going to get all the news from all these places too. So they're, they're going to feed him with all, all the information about what's going on in the industry. So. See, I so feel anyway. like you now have to have him on. Yeah. Well, I'm, I, <laughs> he's been on my other shows many times. But so, I mean, for so. this, he can. Oh yeah. No, no. I'm going to definitely yeah. get, get him on this show he talking could. about, probably talking about YouTube because he has his own, mm -hmm. own opinion about what's happening over there too. So, but that's, that's the, that's that. So, Jamie, thank you. And I know we've gone, you know, pretty long here. Uh, <laughs> I hope it wasn't uh, too much. I, and I and I appreciate everybody that's um, stayed tuned in to the show. Um, I, I will not be back with a new show next week. I'm going to be in Georgia. So I'm going to not do a show next Thursday, but I will be back on November 9th. And that episode, we're going to dive 
all the way in on the use of AI technology. Um, so I'm going to have a guest on that's very, very well known uh, for AI, being an AI expert, as well as um, um, being a podcaster. So, so come back on November 9th uh, for this live show. And in the meantime, thank you so much for being here with me. And, and I hope you have a wonderful evening. And I hope I didn't chew up too much of your evening here. Um, but I hope you got something of, of value out of this too. So thank you so much. I'm going to start that music again. Gosh, I, I don't know if it's the same one or not. I just picked one. So <laughs> we'll see. No, no, I'm going to play a different one this time. And so thank you so much. And Jamie, thank you for, for joining me here. And thank you for listening to this. It looks like we're losing people are, are already because we gave away the... the gave away prize. the duck. Right. <laughs> right. So, all right. There, there Thanks, it starts. everybody. So thank you. Now, thank you for having now me. Now we can exit. So goodbye. Good night, everybody. <laughs>